folks, Michael McGee here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the insanity of why you would dry age a deer for three and a half weeks. Maybe we're fixing to find out that I've screwed this completely up, but I don't think so. When I talk about dry aging, I'm talking about dry. Completely dry. And what I've got here is just a couple uh, strips that I skinned off of here just looking to see what it looked and smelled like. I think we're golden. So what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and go around and skin this off. There's nothing really wrong with this here. I could grind it up. It would rehydrate. be just fine. But what I'm going to use, and I may do that, but what I'm going to be doing right now is going into here and I'm going to get top round and the bottom round and probably even the eye of round out of this deer ham and I'm going to stake it up and we're going to see how tender it is because we know the hind leg of any deer is the driest, the toughest, and to be honest with you, there's no fat in the inner workings of this deer leg. Not only does really no deer have fat really in the intermuscular, but this was a buck and he was at the end of his rut, the last day of the season when I harvested him. What's going on over there, Frank? Nothing. <laughs> the last day of the season when I harvested him and believe it or not, he had lost a lot of weight. My neighbor's got a really nice walk-in cooler. The temperature don't vary much at all in there. So what it's doing is removing moisture. It's not putting moisture in the air. It's removing moisture from the air. And that moisture is coming out of this deer leg. After this meat loses that much moisture, it becomes a little sticky. Okay, at this point, it's time to see what, what we've got. Top round, bottom round, and the eye around right here. Now by cutting all that off, we open it up automatically. These muscles separate automatically. And since it's aged, it's even easier to get your muscle separation. The eye round sits right in here. Dr. Grant Woods, uh, growing deer, calls it the hidden tenderloin of a deer. And it is nice. We're just going to cut it right off the bone where it dead ends there. I'm going to put it in that bone. Now we're going to go after this muscle right here. Put that in there. There's a little bit of connective tissue and sinew. We're just going to throw that out. Let's get that top around. I'm going to go ahead and take it plumb to the bone. Now that's more than the top round. You've also got this piece right here. There is your top round. It doesn't even require a whole lot of trimming. I'm just going to take a little bit of sinew off of that end. I'm going to send him on. All right, now basically what we're left with is this part of the muscle that's in the front of the leg. It's called the round tip. We're just going to just ring it right around there to the bone. We've already got the bone established back here, so we're just going to shave it off all the way around. Careful not to just leave a lot of meat on that bone. The round tip makes an excellent roast, but I'm probably going to stake this one out. Probably going to stake it out. Have you ever heard of a stake out? round tip. It's got different layers of sinew up through there, but those sinews can become soft with a little cooking. All right, one thing you can do with your bones if it's got a little meat scrap on it, just put it out for your chickens. Chickens love to pick them bones clean, and it seems like it helps them lay better in the winter, to be honest with you. Look here, son. I'm going to just set it all out. There's the round tip. There's the bottom round. There's the top round. There's the eye of round, and this piece right here, I think, is called the tri-tip. But at this point, I'm going to stake this stuff up. I'm going to get it cut into steaks. Quite a few people out there that say deer don't have to be aged. They're just as tender before as they are not. 
And that's just simply not true. You can even tell the difference between ice age and dry age, which we proved in our video. So there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and take the eye brown. Now when you're doing these, especially venison, you don't wanna do them thin. If you do them thin, there's no way you're gonna have a juicy tender piece of meat because it's naturally wanting to be dry on you. There's the eye. Now, the one thing about the bottom round, it's got a very thick sinew on it. You wanna just go ahead, take your knife, make sure it's pretty sharp, and you can just shave that old sinew off because this particular piece never, never tenderizes. If you leave some meat on it, turn it backwards, fillet it off, put that right in the grinding meat. The other side of a bottom round also has some sinew and it goes sort of into here. So we're just going to take it off, square it up, put that in the grinding meat and we're ready to stake that baby up. I'm gonna cut, do a center cut, let you see what a beautiful, beautiful. I mean, folks, deer meat is the most pure red meat in the world. I just do not see it being beat by anything, and I'm sure there's a lot of nice ones out there. You can't hardly beat elk. Matter of fact, some people like elk better. We just don't have elk in this neck of the woods, but man, is that ever good. Three and a half weeks in the cooler. Unbelievable. Here's our bottom round. I'm gonna flop it right in here. Here's our top round. I'll do a center cut on it for you. This is my favorite one, folks. This is the one I like to make the smoked deer ham with. I've got plenty of that on hand. So we're just gonna do some steaks, baby. It's gonna be something else. The thing I like about the top round is it stays big all the way to the end. Really a nice steak. And I'm making basically one inch steaks here. And this end piece will just go on in there top round right here. Here is your round point. I'm going to do a center cut on that and show you something. You can see the different layers in there. Generally speaking, I make sausage out of this. But being that this age for three and a half weeks, I'm going to try to stake it up. I can't wait to grill these bad boys or fry them or whatever we do, son. You got to stay and help me eat it, son. Oh, you're mean. Gotta go, son. When you see that red meat, that don't just tear you up where you just have to stay and eat some? No, I gotta... I don't know what the weather's gonna be tonight. Weather's well, gonna be tonight. It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be icy. I know, I gotta... I, I know she said something about some... Get some firewood in tonight. Yeah, you gotta get some firewood in tonight. Round tip steaks. Look at that. Oh. A bowl full of steaks out of one deer hind quarter. The other hind quarter is going into a whole bone-in deer ham that we're trying out. I've got that brine going over here. It's going to be in a different video. I say enough talk. Let's get some seasoning on these bad boys and let's get them fried. All right, there is a big, thick, round steak. And here is a big, round tip. We're just gonna go with some Himalayan salt. It's pink, but it's not the curing salt. We're gonna grab us some black pepper. We're just gonna go simple with it, folks. Go simple with it. Flop it over, do it again. We're gonna throw these bad boys in a skillet, and we're gonna see how they're like, because we don't overcook these babies. We like them a little bit medium on a medium rare side. There's our brine. Getting her, trying to bring her to boil. What you doing, Frank? Yo, Frank. What's doing, young man? Trying to get this thing clean. Trying to get her clean? You working hard, ain't you? Trying to get it clean. You know what you're going to have to do, son? Yeah. If you don't clean it fast enough, you're going to have to eat me a, eat one of these steaks and tell the people yeah, how it tastes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get clean. 
I jumped the gun on you, son. I cooked him before lunch. <laughs> Yeah, it ain't nowhere near lunch. It's 10.30. 25. Oh. Uh-huh. There you go, son. Okay. All right, son. Come over here. I want you to try this bad boy. Yes, sir. I got me my knife from Shore Sharp, the Spyderco. Come here, son. I'm gonna give you a center cut of this beauty. Come here, I'm right here. It's cutting like butter. Literally oh, no, like butter. Done. Like butter. You want a piece that's a little more done? Mm-hmm. Oh, there it is. There that's the top round, son. That is good. I usually don't do the, uh, what you call a round tip. Hmm. Let's see if it's tender enough. That way. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is very tender. Thank you. Whoa, that's hard to beat right there. Woo! You can make a bill on that, son. Mm. Make a what on it? Meal. A meal, yeah. I thought you said you make a video on that, and I thought, well, what do you think I'm doing right now? Mmm. <laughs> 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 Tell me what you think about this. I think you'll think that is more tender than the top round. Mm. What is that side round? Round tip. Round mm. tip. And I can't believe it. I can't even feel it in my teeth. It's the saw. I don't know the apple. That's like butter. Mm. That's like butter. Mm. And all they come from that thing. One leg. Mm. One leg. You age one three and a half weeks. Mm. 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 It don't taste anything that's wrong with it. It's just pure clean meat as it was the day it went in there. Just more tender. Yeah, that's what they did. They got to age. Mm. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Thank you. Did you like it? Yep. You need just one more piece of the road. Oh, one more piece of the road. I got a bro. You mm. gotta have some. You, mm. gotta, you gotta have some protein. Mm. You like that salt, don't you? Mm. Salt and pepper, there ain't no, nothing else. It ain't got nothing. That might be good to start off here, that's what I'm saying. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It ain't even lunchtime, and this makes me more hungry than ever, son. I know. Everybody's gonna love it, ain't you? Where are you going? I'm going bye bye. You gonna make me eat all this? Yeah. Mm. See, yeah, he's mean to me. Make me eat all this. <clears throat> you know I learned from Caleb. <laughs> you did. Yeah, I can eat it all. <laughs> Caleb, you in here? Caleb, buddy, come on down. Hey, come on. I need to taste this. Come on down, young man. Is that good or is that good? Mm. Oh man. Look how much of it we got left for lunch. Mm. Come down here boys, you gotta try this. I can't believe it myself. Frank tried and said it was the best food no, he no. never, never it's did. Good, son. I can go. I just tried my tea, so. This is all that's left of two big steaks. Oh. Whoa, that's tender. Man. Three and a half weeks of aging time, boys. Makes a difference like nobody's beeswax. Now, that's the way you clean the plate of food off is get these boys involved. Yes, sir. Frank's leaving. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Man, that's really good. Mm -hmm. okay, I've already fed him a bunch, Caleb. I've already fed Frank a bunch. We're gonna get one more there, boys. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, there you have it, folks. Aged deer meat is premium, and people that say it doesn't make a difference literally don't know what they're talking about. This here is incredible. You cannot age deer like this three and a half weeks on ice. The longest I ever went on ice was three weeks, and it was okay, but it started smelling a little off, but it was okay. This did not smell off one little bit. And the I want to be clear, the ribs and the thinner parts I got off before the three and a half weeks were up. It was more like two and a half weeks. They, those things just dry out, dry, dry, dry. Whereas these big, thick chunks of hind quarter can let, stay in there a little longer. So there you have it, folks. I know it's not deer season. It's going to be a good long while till deer season comes back in. But when you do have it come back in, I want you to know exactly how you can do this. This was an older, this was a, probably a three and a half year old buck that had lost all his weight. He was literally down to 95.7 pounds field dressed when we killed him. During the early season before the rut, he more than likely weighed 125 to 130. He was that age class of a deer. So anyway, we're gonna get on out of here Hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.